What's up, fitness friends? It's your certified health fitness host, Caroline Jordan, and I'm here with Julie from Protocol Sports Hi. Systems. And today, Julie is our special expert guest. She's sharing how to get rid of big toe tendon pain with one quick, quick trick. Now, here's the deal. I came to Julie after six months of going to a chiropractor to treat what I thought was sesamoiditis. It was achy, big toe tendon pain. Mm -hmm wasn't really able to walk as much as I liked, and I was getting treatments to fix the pain, but it would come right back. Yeah. So I shared this with Julie, and she was like, oh, I know how to help you. Yeah. It's like, really? Because I've been going to this other guy who knows how to help me too, and I'm not really getting anywhere. So what happened, Julie? Oh, gosh. Okay, so the thing with Caroline is that she thought she had something that was easily, um, diagnosed, right? So sesamoiditis. Now the sesamoid, you have sesamoid bones underneath your big toe. You have them right at the ball of your feet, this little, these two little nubs right here. And you also have two big ones right underneath the kneecap. They're, they're kind of a pulley system. So they help with friction, but they help with these big tendons being pulled all of the time. Because when your foot lands, if you notice, you have a lot of bones in your feet, right? 26 bones to be 100% honest with you. You got a lot of bones. It's a lot of bones. And so, and so what happens is, and what I think what happened with Miss Caroline here is that she was on her feet, you know, she was a spin instructor. She, she was on her feet doing stuff and doing stuff and doing stuff. And she had another injury on the other foot that was similar. Mm -hmm. And so she went, jumped right in and thought that that's my, what be, might be what she had. But what was going on is as she's pressing down into the ball of her feet and ball of her feet and ball of her feet, these bones that you have, you've got the phalanges, which are your toes. You've got these big long bones, which are your metatarsals. Then you've got the bones that run underneath your ankle. That's called your tarsal bones, these tiny little cube bones. And then you've got this big ankle bone, the subtalus um, and the talus and the subtalus, and that moves into your tibia. Well, each of these bones have to actually move independently of the other in order to take impact from the ground, from gravity, from you. That's why we've got this nice arch. And so if these guys are not all moving and the bones aren't moving, it's gonna ask the tendons to do more work. Mm. And so what happens is you have, let's say, spinning. So you're on your big toe and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing. Well, pretty soon your foot, your foot just kind of adapts to the pressure that's being put on it. And now you don't have the range of motion in this toe and then this long bone that you need. Well, you've got these big tendons that come all the way underneath that basically allow you to pull your toes and to pull the arch and they get inflamed. And so most likely when I was working with her, what we did was we did an assessment and what we found is that her big first metatarsal really wasn't working. And so as soon as we moved this big metatarsal, that freed up the navicular and the um, medial cuneiform, which are part of her, her tarsal bones. And then that freed up everything. And now the, once the joint gets free, the tendon's like, oh. I and it can actually go. go back to where it was. Yeah. And so it was actually a lot simpler than most people think. I think the biggest, um, problem or issue that we come across, especially in today's society, is people will diagnose without touching. Mm -hmm. And when, we, when I put my hands on her feet, her bones didn't move. And if her bones don't move, the tendons aren't gonna do the job. They're, they're trying to do the job of the bones and of the muscles. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we just freed up that space and now she's got no pain. Yeah, so basically I had my sesamoid injury on in my right foot mm -hmm. and when I was having big toe tendon pain on my left, I walked in and assumed I diagnosed, I self-diagnosed myself huh. with a sesamoid yeah, injury. That happens. Yeah, you know, the trauma of this injury got to me and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I probably have it on the second foot. Yeah. But she's right, I'd been on my foot for years and I didn't do a lot of mobility mm -hmm. and so everything got stuck and because it was stuck and not moving properly like she just explained mm -hmm. I was having tendon pain yeah. because the bones weren't mobile so the tendons were doing the job of the immobile bones yeah so she taught me how to mobilize my bones and now the tendons are like oh we can chill now which was great yeah so Julie mm -hmm. what exactly did you show me okay so 
take the sock I'm off. I'm going to have you take the sock off. We're going to show you on uh, Caroline's foot first, and then I'll show you on Scully's foot here. So basically, what you're going to do, if you're going to try and self-mobilize yourself, obviously, that's redundant. What you're <laughs> going to do is you're going to grab into the arch. So you're going to put your thumb and your forefinger, you have this little webbing, and you're going to wrap it right around where the leg turns into the ankle. Okay, and what that's doing is that's supporting the, the um, tarsal bones and it's freeing up any opportunity for me to move these big bones. Oh, there we did it again. Yep. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a weird feeling because when it moves, you're like, wow, <laughs> that's not been moving. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's actually really fun. Your bones are supposed to move, you guys. They're not supposed to move like crazy amounts in here, but you need these to move. Like, just like you need your hands to move. You need these bones to move because as we walk and we move, these guys have to take up the slack for any kind of unstable surface that we're on mm -hmm. or impact that we're on. And when they don't, it'll travel up your kinetic chain and you may find you have a back injury or a knee injury or a hip injury and it could be coming right from here. Yep. So thumb and forefinger, you're gonna wrap the webbing around where the leg goes into the arch. And so your thumb is right at the base of your heel, okay, where it comes starts to go into the arch. You're not gonna pick it up by the toe, because that's not what we do. You're gonna grab past the joint of the big toe, right into the long bone, right as the top of the arch comes, you're gonna feel the long bone. And you're gonna take it with the pads of your fingers, not your fingertips, so I don't want you to pinch. And I'm just gonna really lightly hold here to stabilize, and I'm just gonna pull. So you're not trying to pull it off, because that would be a whole nother video that we'd have to do on how to put your bone back in. We're gonna decompress, and then I'm just gonna move it up and back, and I'm just gonna see if I can't Ooh. wiggle it. And you should be able to feel, it looks like this. So I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm holding and supporting, and I'm right here and I'm wiggling like that, because you really do want that bone to move. And you should feel movement in all of these big bones. You should feel movement in the second bone. You should feel movement in the third, in the fourth, and in the fifth. All of these guys should move independently of each other. Mm -hmm. And if they're not wiggling, that's probably something that you need to address at that point. And so really lightly hold. If you can't, and you feel like it's too hard for you to do, push it in a little bit. And it's called um, positional release. You're gonna push it in for like 10, 15 seconds. And then you're gonna lightly pull it back out. And then you're gonna push it back down again. And then you're gonna pull it back out. And after about three or four times of doing that, then you're just, excuse me, you're just gonna wiggle it back and forth, just like that. So if someone is doing this at home, how long should they spend doing this technique? You know, it's not really, I wouldn't go into it into a long period of time because the body will actually, once the body is back in its to its um, natural resting place, like all the muscles are calm, all the tissues are calm, the joints will start to move. Mm -hmm. So what you'll feel like is if you're wiggling it like this, if you, the harder you move on it, it's not going to go. But if you really lightly just kind of let the body relax, mm -hmm. take a couple of deep breaths, allow the body to do it. Mm -hmm. Don't hold your breath doing it. Just really relax. The body will, will let go on its own. And you should, within like 30 seconds or so to a minute, you should, you should be able to do it. I am awesome. a big fan of... I'm a big fan of sticking my fingers through my toes anyway because it space, spaces out these big metatarsals. Yep. Because, sorry you guys, but footwear is horrible right now. And there's this whole thing of fashion versus function, right? And so the majority of footwear is very fashionable and not functional. Mm -hmm. And we don't have, our feet are meant to be big and wide and to create space so that we actually can, can stand structured and balanced. Mm -hmm. And if we're not doing that because we're wearing high heels that squish us like this, or ill-fitting shoes that squish us like this, or the newest thing, which is running shoes that put us back like this, because Ooh. that's how they are, because everything goes into toe extension, it's destroying our feet and it's destroying our balance. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're gonna get a lot of other injuries. So you wanna think about trying to open up these metatarsals as much as possible. A really good tip is getting a pair of 
pedicure sponges. You know, when you go, yes. get a, go get a pedicure, we use them all the time in here. And you just put them right in between your toes and you just hang out with them for like five minutes, 10 minutes, or stand on them. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it creates what's called a metatarsal bar, which will actually spread out the ball of your foot like this and give space between these metatarsals. And then it also spreads out your feet. And so it allows your feet to go back to where they, they naturally are. So if someone is struggling with big toe tendon pain, mm -hmm. what would be your top three tips for them today to take away from this video? Oh, so top three tips. The first one is use that, go get a pedicure, go get a pedicure sponge and put it in your toes. Like right now, it costs you like 10 cents or $1.50 at like the dollar store. Mm -hmm. Go and do that like right away from here to here. That's gonna be super helpful for you guys because it's gonna allow space. The second tip, I would say mobilize your feet. Do not be afraid of your feet. Your feet are amazing and they are going to be the thing that keeps you standing upright and strong. So go in and kind of move these bones around and don't be afraid of them. The other thing to worry about with the tendon pain and any kind of tendonitis is this tendon attaches here, but then it also attaches all the way to the back of the heel. So a lot of times if people are having really tight calves, gastroc soleus, the calves are gonna be tight and that's gonna keep the ankle from moving. Mm -hmm. And then these guys are gonna have to do the work. So if we can keep the, the gastroc and the soleus, the calf, if we can keep that really, um, really stretched out and really mobile, that's gonna allow for mobilization of the ankle, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna be able to mobilize the, the tendons. It's well. all connected, guys. It's all connected. So it's all connected. Takeaways, go get your pedicure se toe separators. Mm -hmm. Do that now. Play with your feet, mobilize them, get those bones to move. Yeah. You got 26. Yeah. 26. 26. Lots of bones in here. And roll those calves. Yeah, roll the calves. Get those calves mobile. Yep. So, Julie, I can't thank you enough for no. sharing that today. I think a lot of people will benefit from just learning to how to mobilize their feet. Yeah. I spent a lot of money fixing the pain but not treating the problem. Yeah. And this is really treating the problem so that I don't have to fix the pain, right. which is kind of a game changer. Yep. So I'll leave links to Protocol Sport Systems in the description box below if you wanna learn more from Julie and her amazing team mm. here in San Diego. If you're struggling with big toe tendon pain, she's kind of the woman that knows how to find <laughs> you a solution. And I really hope this helped you comment below, let us know, and um, go mobilize your, your foot bones, okay? Go play with your feet. Go play with your feet, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, team, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.